Hey everyone, uh, I'm gonna be spruiking these posters for a while so you better get used to it. <laughs> I just think they're awesome, they're really really cool. Uh, anyway, this video is uh, to sum up the work that I did on a recent challenge and um, I, it was actually spread out over um, 48 hours. Um, but I did so much social media and so much work in that time and in that work um, skipped a lot of things because I was working so hard under a very tight time restrictions. So I wanted to do a video that kind of sums the whole thing up. Um, and I'll be cutting in my social media that I did across the, the, um, the course of the challenge. Uh, and I will um, cut back here to sort of explain it as it goes. So. Um, the challenge started because of a conversation that Niels Vandenberg had, uh, ABS um, journeyman Smith, Niels Vandenberg was having with another ABS journeyman Smith, Stuart Smith, um, who is another very talented bladesmith if you um, want to check him out, uh, he's on Instagram. But they had, were discussing motivation, especially motivation during what is a very tough time with these lockdowns uh, where people are going a little bit stir crazy at home. And they wanted to inspire people to try and show themselves what they're capable of, basically. Um, and they decided on making a dagger, an ornate dagger, in just 48 hours. Now, daggers in the knife-making world are difficult to do. They're one of the more difficult types of knives to make. Um, and because of that, um, usually you take a lot of time with them. So to do one in 48 hours, especially an ornate one, um, is redonkulous. It's a redonkulous challenge. <laughs> um, but, Niels challenged me personally, and so I'm not going to turn down an opportunity like that. Um, and it's very difficult uh, when you're working for yourself and, and, and whatnot, but to actually take that sort of time away. But I had never made a dagger before. And I knew that uh, in the world of Niels Vandenberg's brain, <laughs> He doesn't accept a dagger as being a dagger unless it can be taken down and stripped completely. And so I'd never done a takedown before. And I knew that if I was going to compete, I would have to actually uh, uh, appeal to Niels's sensibilities. <laughs> uh, and in the end, I made this, which is a blade that is very special uh, to my heart, a Fairbairn Sykes dagger. Uh, this is a British commando dagger or special forces dagger and it's designed specifically for um, killing people very silently. The blade is thin and delicate and it can go into rib cages um, to uh, puncture kidneys and vital organs uh, but mostly you would uh, grab people by the, come up behind them and grab their mouth, slide this into the side of their neck and punch forward and ripping out their throat and they can't scream as they die. Very brutal, I know, but uh, as many people know, my mentor was British Special Forces back in the 60s and um, he used to carry one of these um, and it's as soon as it was a uh, clear as a dagger challenge, I knew that I only had one type of dagger that I was ever going to make and it was this one. Uh, so I started the, the uh, challenge uh, full of vim and I thought it wouldn't be a an Alex Norton project if I didn't forge it out of scrap steel. So it was actually forged from an old file, an old Nicholson file. Um, that I, I've got a pile of Nicholson files that I've already taken sections off and hardness tested. Um, so I, I know they're good, which is good because I didn't have time to experiment. Um, and I forged it out, forged out the double bevel. The main reason dagger builds are tricky is because when you're forging a bevel, a knife wants to bend away from the where the bevel is and normally you get that with sort of a curved knife and it ends up looking like a scimitar uh, when you're on a single bladed knife but on a dagger you've got to manage both of them in such a way that the forging is perfect and it stays straight. You veer it one way with by doing one bevel and then veer it the other way doing the other one. You go just all the way up to the tip and keep it laser straight the entire time. It's tricky and it takes patience and it takes close attention to detail but Fairbairn Sykes, <laughs> it's a delicate, delicate dagger, so a lot of fine work, but we'll get that. Uh, once it was forged, I did the cleanup grind on it, uh, did the quench, and while it was tempering back, uh, that was a nerve-wracking quench, by the way, <laughs> um, when a, on a blade this thin, I mean, to give you an idea, at its thickest point, this is 1.68 millimeters thick, 
um, which is actually thinner than a classic fair band Sykes. A, a classic fair band Sykes is a diamond pattern um, where it's about six mil thick at the base here and it goes all the way up. But it was so thin so delicate i was terrified it was going to warp or snap in the quench it did not it stayed laser straight i was very very happy with it um, while that was tempering though i started work on the handle now the original handle uh, i wanted to make out of woods that sam towns had sent me um, because he has been insp instrumental in getting me where i am in my knife making career and so he had sent me some zebra wood and some african paduke um, which I put together and I had zebra wood, a stripe of paduk, and then zebra wood. And um, I had made it. Now you, you can see Fairbairn Sucks handles are circular. They're totally round uh, rather than ovalized. And so basically I have to drill a hole all the way down to the bottom um, to accommodate the special tang. So a Fairbairn Sucks knife has an interesting fitter. The, uh, they actually have a rat tail tang, however the top part of it is squared off to index it in the perfectly round handle. The handle's not ovalized or anything, it is a circle. So uh, you've got your blade coming down here, you've got your shoulders of the tang, and then there's usually a squared part of the tang, and then it steps in again and goes down to the end and this part here is round it's just straight round and they just drill a hole right the way through this turned piece of wood and out the other end they actually will peen it onto a butt cap i'm going to do it slightly different i'm still going to have the index piece here and the round rat tail tang but i'm going to thread the end of it and do a takedown design just because i'm a bit of a masochist <laughs> and I needed the hole to start in the center of the block and finish at the center of the block. And I had a wide block, it was about that wide uh, square block, about 30 mil square all the way down. But my drill press table turns out was not straight. And it, while I went in the center at the top, it came out the bottom in the corner, which means that um, I couldn't do this vase shaped handle that, that these knives have. I had to do a straight handle, which was not to plan, but I kept working on it and I thought I'll fancy it up by fluting the handle and I did a different handle design uh, to what you see here. Uh, and I kept going with it and going with it and going with it and the knife tempered perfectly and I started doing the guard fit up, which is beaten copper, which I then aged uh, to give it this vintage look. Um, started work rough cut the pommel cap out of uh, cast copper um, which was a fun project from a long time ago and I um, started doing that and I actually had it at the point where it all fit up with balance nicely the whole thing fit beautifully and this was on the night of the second day so when I say the second day it started on Monday lunchtime we finished Wednesday lunchtime so 48 hours so by Tuesday night, I went inside and I put my knife, as it were, um, on the desk in front of me and I sat at my computer and I kept looking down and I hated it. I hated it so much. <laughs> ah, bloody wasps. Wasps everywhere in my shed at the moment. Um, and I had it sitting there and I hated it and I, uh, Niels Vandenberg started a, he was doing a lot of um, live chats during the 48 hour build. And he was doing one and I joined in and I said to him, look, I'm not, I'm happy with how I everything about it except the handle. And uh, Niels actually said to me, look, Alex, if your original design was a vase shaped handle, you're never going to be happy with it until it's a vase shaped handle. And your new handle is straight and fluted and it's, you're never going to be happy with it. And so I took his advice and I woke up before sunrise because I knew I was going to only have very limited time and I made an entirely new handle from scratch. All right, so early morning start and I've decided that I do not like the handle. I'm just, it's, I can do better basically. And um, having a time crunch is no excuse not to try and do better. So uh, at the very least I've got a handle um, if I run out of time, but otherwise I'm going to try and make something out of some local materials since you know, I'm the one Tasmanian in the group actually doing this. So I've got some Tasmanian Blackwood and some Tasmanian Myrtle Burl. They don't look much at the moment, but once they are shaped and polished, they look stunning. So let's see what I can do. And 
This time I did uh, Tasmanian Blackwood and Tasmanian Myrtle Burl because I'm Tasmanian and I wanted it to be a bit of me. Um, and I was much happy with the colour scheme. The dark woods on the copper looked much better than the pale woods on the copper. Um, and it uh, fluted, uh, not in flute, it vased, vase profiled better. Still not perfect, I would have loved more flair here, but that was actually a uh, bit of a stuff up on my part. Uh, but it started fitting up beautifully, I was able to age the copper um, and do my differential etch technique of the flame up the blade, sharpen it and finish it in um, just in time, it had 26 minutes left. Okay guys, it's finished. Finally. <laughs> Tasmanian Blackwood and Myrtle Burl handle. Beaten copper fitting. Or guard I should say. Cast copper pommel. Rough cast. Resist etched. File steel forged blade. Very freaking sharp, man. Balanced nicely. Right there. Whoop. Right there. Right below the guard. Just like a fair band Sykes knife should be. Whew. What a build. Um, then I uh, had a big long live stream debrief with everybody and it was uh, wonderful seeing everybody finish after because I'm in one of the um, earliest time zones so then I got to watch everybody as the uh, time went on finish in South Africa where Niels was all the way through to America over the next several hours um, and they finished about 9 or 10 p.m. for me um, and yeah um, Niels himself finished with two or three minutes left <laughs> I think it was so um, it was phenomenal and you should, um, there was a hashtag while the build was happening, uh, hashtag 48 hour dagger build and hour was H-O-U-R not H-R, 48 hour dagger build uh, and if you jump on that hashtag on both Facebook and Instagram you can actually see all the other um, bladesmiths competing as they went. Um, but it was a phenomenal challenge, it was really really good. I, um, I learned a lot about myself and my processes uh, trying to, and what I'm capable of trying to actually achieve this in such a small amount of time. And uh, I'm really, uh, especially after changing the handle, I'm really happy with how it came out. I'm proud of it. It's, it's nice to actually have something that was frankly rushed, that well, was the whole point of the challenge, uh, rushed and turned out in a way that I was quite proud of and quite happy with. Um, and uh, yeah, I learned a lot about myself, learned a lot about my processes, wasps, man. <laughs> they're everywhere um, so uh, I learned about the community as well met a lot of new people who have since become internet friends uh, from around the world uh, because they liked what I was doing and we were all sharing advice and tips with each other even I was able to help a few people out um, I, I'm at that point now where I can start giving people um, tips about what they're doing which uh, makes me feel better uh, because I can give back uh, to a community that's given so much to me. And um, yeah, it, it turned out to be a wonderful thing. And, and Niels is already talking about organizing a new one. I don't, don't know if I'll be able to make it into the next one, but we'll see. We'll see how things go. Finding the time is always hard. Um, but yeah, hopefully you um, you like this, because this is, I am actually going to be selling this. Um, I'm going to... I'm currently making up a nice display box for it and a, a stand so it can actually be out on display um, and I'll be listing it and selling it because uh, as much as I'd like to keep it uh, I need to try and make uh, make up that lost three days <laughs> really so um, but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm proud of what I did I'm proud of what everybody else did seeing people hit points of adversity and keep going, uh, find solutions to problems that they thought were unsolvable. Um, and the drama, there were, there were tears, there were screams, it was, um, it was a very dramatic event. Go away, wasp. Honestly, I'm trying to record a video. Um, and, um, 
yeah, watching everybody grow a little bit in just 48 hours. It was, it was very cool, but, uh, and, and learn things about themselves. The debriefs and the, the chats after it was all over have been uh, quite epic, to be honest. And, um, yeah, what an experience. And it actually, um, it's one that I would highly recommend you do try and do an impossible task in an impossible time frame. Um, and even if you fail, you will learn a lot a lot about yourself, about your workflow, your practices. Um, I, for one, learned that uh, I, I always knew I was bad at hidden tang guard fit-ups um, and I, it was highlighted exceptionally <laughs> with the fact that, um, uh, that I had a time restriction. Normally I'd take time with it and I still suck. Uh, so rushing it, it made all of my faults with it uh, much more clear. Um, and it's given me some ideas on things I can do to improve it already. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to put that to the test at some point. But uh, yeah, I, uh, I hope that uh, seeing that has inspired you to, to get out and try it yourself. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be part of a challenge that somebody else has done. Um, it can just be something you're challenging yourself to see if you can do something that you thought you couldn't. Um, I mean, doing a full takedown, an accurate takedown, like this uh, actually does. I've got it on very, very tight at the moment. There you go. The pommel nut screws off. Drops on the floor. Handle slides off. Guard slides off. And yeah, so it is a full functioning takedown, which I did not know. I was capable of making. <laughs> I know the theory, um, I know the steps, but actually going and doing it is an entirely different kettle of fish, let me tell you. Let me tell you. But uh, yeah, it's beautiful dagger, I'm, I'm very happy with it and I'm very, I'm proud of what I was able to achieve and it's important to be proud of yourself when you have achieved something. So. Yeah, I will stop ranting about that and let you get on with your day. Um, I've got another video in the works, so hopefully you'll be seeing that shortly. And um, yeah, be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Check out my Etsy store, it's below. My Redbubble store is also below where you can get things like that awesome poster. And that design is on all sorts of other things like books and coasters and mugs and all sorts of things as well. Uh, but I've got heaps of other designs, some of them funny, some of them uh, tr me trying to be clever. <laughs> um, and some of them just branded if you like Valhalla Ironworks, so uh, you, can, you can rep me using my merch. Uh, and don't forget to check out my Patreon, which uh, has been going really, really well, and um, I have got a heap of new content coming out for it uh, very soon. Um, had a little bit of a slowdown because of this build, but uh, yeah, it's all settling back now. Anyway, I'll leave you guys to it, and I hope you are all doing super well. I'll catch you on the next one. The lark in the morning, she raises up a nest And she goes off in the air with the jewel on her breast And like the jolly ploughboy, she whistles and she sings And she goes home in the evening with the jewel on her wings Now Roger the ploughboy, a castle blaney blade Goes a whistling and singing for yonder leafy shade He met with dark eyed Susan, she's handsome I declare And far more enticing than the birds all in the air the lark in the morning, she raises up her nest 